Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 100 and something of the Spearhead Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and we're on time today. In fact, we're fucking early. I'm recording this on a Tuesday at 10 p.m. at night in my fucking warehouse. I'm going to be here till midnight because I've got to smash out bi-monthly bull as well because I'm a fucking workhorse, ladies and gentlemen. And why am I in my warehouse, right, when I should be on tour with Luke Kidgel? In my fucking motorhome, which by the way, tickets are still on sale for. We'll get into it, right? Why am I here instead of there? I'll tell you why. Because I got some fucking big opportunity thing, which by the way, I'm very grateful for. But will I complain about it? Absolutely. That is the answer to that. Because, you know, I just can't be fucking grateful. Well, I can be grateful, but I can't only see the positive, you know, like with every positive comes a million negatives and that's my life, man. And that's how you should live your life, right? That's absolutely my advice of of how people should live their life. If anything good happens to you, don't think about how positive it is. Just think about how much that sucks. And that's the way to hate your life. Actually, that's terrible advice, guys. I'm taking that back. That was a joke. That is not how you should live your life. I'm actually, I try to be a very positive person, but let's be honest, if this podcast was positive, would it be funny? And would you, is that what you want? I don't think that's what you want from me. You guys don't want, like, what am I going to do? Do a fucking Russell Brand and open up my third eye and talk to you about how we can all change the world like the fucking Oscars? Huh? Is that what you want from me? To cut, to, to work really hard? to leave the working class, and then the minute I get there, the minute I leave the working class, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my fucking golden trophy, and I'm going to go, all right, I finally made it. I'm no longer one of the working class. And even though I came from the working class and I understand the struggle, you know what? This golden trophy proves that I'm better than them, and I hold the knowledge, right? I'm so sick of that. All those fucking actors... And I, you know, I I lied. They didn't come from the working class, did they? No. They came, right? They came from fucking being child actors. It's like Ricky Gervais said, you know, a lot of you guys have spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. It's so fucking true. At the Oscars. Isn't that just great? Isn't that what we want an award show to, to be? That's what I want my award shows to be. I don't want to appreciate art. I want to be lectured by the people who had kind of... I don't want to... uh, Yeah, that's what I want. I don't want to appreciate art. I just want to be lectured by the people who kind of had nothing to do with the art other than reading the words that some other cunt gave them. Yeah? That's what I want, right? I want those actors, those actors with so much life experience. You know, they went through acting school as a kid. And then when they grew up, they did acting in university. And then they got a job in acting and then they did acting for a job and then they got on stage and they told, you know, coal workers what to do. (laughs) That's what I want. My favorite part, dude, I laughed so much when I saw this. My fucking favorite part from uh, the Oscars was Natalie Portman embroidering her Dior cape with the names of female directors who did not get nominated for an Oscar. Like, that was her all-powerful statement, was embroidering her $30,000 custom designer outfit with gold thread full of the names of female directors who didn't get nominated for their fucking shiny award, who, let's be honest, look up a, a lot of those names on there, they're millionaires already. Hey! That's your fucking award. Being a millionaire. That's your award. If you're a fucking actor, if you're a fucking director, male, female, you know what your award is? Not having to work ever again. Getting paid for your passion. That's your fucking award. What? You need a golden naked man as well? That's your fucking award is not having to break your spine building houses until you die like everyone I'm surrounded with. That's your fucking award. What, what, you need more than that? Dude, if, if I ever made a million dollars out of comedy, that's all I need. I don't need, to, I don't need to get the fucking box ticked by all these other cunts. Oh, oh, being a millionaire is amazing, but you know what I, would, you know what I want even more than a $20,000 watch and a house made? I want a shiny statue in the approval of my peers. Can't shut up. You're a millionaire. You made it, bro. 
You beat the fucking wage gap, huh? You made it. And you know what's what's great about Natalie Portman? This is so funny, right? She's out there campaigning for change by writing names of bitches she's never met on her fucking $10,000 Dior cape, right? That'll really change the world. She's out there writing the names of cunts she's never met or worked with, right? And she is a person who actually could do something about female directors not getting work, right? She's an A-list actor, an incredible actor. She's been in Star Wars. She's been in the fucking, uh, of, like, all of the Marvel films. She's, like, one of the biggest female actors in the world. And she's not really working for female directors. You know what I mean? Like, when that offer comes across her table, does she look at what gender the person who directed it is? No. She's looking at her fucking paycheck, and she's looking, will this increase my profile? Just like everyone else. But not only, right, can she pick and choose what movies she acts in, Lord knows she doesn't need more fucking money, right? She could work for a female director, the movie could flop, and it wouldn't fucking matter. She could work with a gender-fluid guy who has the best idea ever, and it could make millions of dollars, still wouldn't change her career that much, right? She can take those risks. But is she? No. She's just yelling at everyone else. Just like all those fucking actors who go out there and they do their speech, guys, guys. You know, I've got fucking $30 million and I'm rich and famous and I could stop working today and die an incredibly rich man. I've got 60 years left and I never have to work a day in my life again. I know what you need to do with your life. That shit. You know, guys, it's time to encourage change. So what I'm going to do this award season is I'm going to wear the same pair of underwear to all of the award shows to show that I care. Like that shit. Like, oh, wow, how renewable of you, Joaquin Phoenix. You're not going to wash your nuts? Bro, I'm inspired. I'm going to buy a Tesla tomorrow. Oh, wait, I'm from the working class. I can't afford a fucking Tesla. Like, all of those cunts need to be out there, like, not talking to fucking people. They need to be out there, like, hey, going, hey, Sony, hey, hey, Sony, you guys investing in coal mines and fracking, are ya? Maybe don't. Gonna get a whole bunch of comments. Um, actually, Sony doesn't invest in, what, you think I researched this before I turned on the camera? No, it's Spearhead Sundays. Welcome to the fucking show. I don't know what I'm talking about, but it sounds correct. And that's the vibe, ladies and gentlemen. You want to listen to a a podcast that's well-researched? Hey, bro, you're in the comedy section. Jump over to science, maybe, huh? Why don't you go do that? You know what I'm saying? All these fucking actors are just lecturing people, trying to get the moral high ground on f- to impress Twitter. When really all they're doing is when they get on stage and they start going, guys, we need to stand up for what's right. It's just like impressing other multimillionaires while fucking Damo at home, who's a plumber, goes, oh, I turned on the TV to forget about how shit the world is, not to be reminded that I'm an evil cunt for participating in it. What do you want me to do? I love, my favorite thing about that Natalie Portman shit is that she is a person, not only could she choose as an A plus list actor to work with other female directors more often instead of accepting roles from male ones, right? That's how she can make change instead of wearing her fucking cape and lecturing everybody else while doing nothing herself, right? Not only could she choose roles with more female directors, get this, Natalie Portman owns her own production company. She herself employs directors and makes films. And how many female directors has Natalie Portman's production company employed? The answer is one. And that person's name is Natalie Portman, bro. That's the only female director that Natalie Portman has employed with her production company. Herself. To give more money to herself while changing no one else's life. Just like all of these other fucking actors at the Oscars who are out there lecturing people who are on minimum fucking wage. All they want to do is feed their kids while actors are going, Guys, I have the answer. Shut up. Get your fucking shiny statue and fuck off. You read someone else's words well. That's what you did. 
acting is an incredible talent, but you're not a fucking hero. Shush. I don't know. It just shits me. All these people lecturing cunts. I'm using, uh, I don't have my regular podcast gear, so I'm going to have to stop periodically to stop and restart the camera. I hope that doesn't annoy you guys too much, but I got to do that every 10 minutes or so. And I've yelled about the Oscars for 10 minutes, so I got to give it a quick pause and a quick start, and then we'll be back into it. I'm just going to edit out every time I change the camera from here on out. But just so you know, if it's jumpy every 10 minutes, that's why. I haven't accidentally said the N word and I'm trying to not cancel myself. (laughs) It's because I'm a camera. And we're back. I'll stop acknowledging them from here on out. Just wanted to keep you guys in the loop in case it seemed like I was cutting shit out. Um, so, right, Oscars are out of the way. Bang. Uh, dude, I love uh, that an international film uh, won the fucking Oscars. I do think that is really cool. That's crazy to me. Like, a dude who doesn't even speak English got to the very, very top of the industry just from creating a good film. Bro, you can do anything. I so believe that. You can fucking do anything. Oh... I don't know if I can do it. Can't a Korean guy named Bong won an Oscar for Best Picture without even making an American film? What, you can't go to the gym? Oh, you can't go to the gym? It's too hard to go to the gym three days a week? Bro, try being called Bong not speaking English and winning an Oscar. That's hard. Go to the gym, you fat cunt. That's what I've decided, dude. If you don't go to the gym, right? I and I'm I'm talking I'm talking to me just as much as I am to you, right? This is for myself, right? If you don't go to the gym, the only reason is, right? It's not because you're busy, it's not because something came up, it's not because it's harder for you than it is for someone else. It's not because you're sad. The only reason is because you're a lazy cunt and that's it. Because Every time I skip the gym, right, an hour after I decide to skip the gym and then I actually don't have time to do it, I think and I go, you know what, the actual reason why I didn't go is because I am a lazy cunt. And that's fine, right? There's nothing wrong with being a lazy cunt. But what I'm saying is you're not going to achieve your dreams and you're not going to stop being a fat cunt or in my case, a skinny bastard. So that's all, right? Let's stop fucking, oh, it's so hard to live a healthy lifestyle and stick to my diet. Nah, you're a lazy cunt, bro. Because you know what? Every time I, st- I don't stick to my diet, right? I got to eat more food. That's harder, right? I'll t- uh, dude, putting on weight when you're like me, I'm six foot eight. Might be easier for other people, but I am six foot eight, right? I got to put on 10 kilos to look like I've put on one. <laughs> like your, your, my 10 kilos is one kilo for you. That's why you, dude, have you ever seen a six foot eight fat cunt? No, you haven't. Dude, I need to Google six foot eight obese man. Six foot eight obese man. Do they even exist? This will be inspiring to me. Imagine how much money you would have to eat, how much food you'd have to eat, and how much money you'd have to spend to be a fucking six foot eight obese man. Dude, there is no six foot eight obese people. Where are we? Nah, can't find them. The only like big six foot eight cunt is that mountain guy who is the world's strongest man. He's like a 150 kilos. Where are we? Oh! Six foot eight. Oh, I found one. Oh, it's a weight loss one too. This is crazy. 31, six foot eight. 764 pounds. What the fuck? That's insane. And then he lost... 350 pounds and now he weighs 150 kilos and I would imagine a lot of that is just loose skin dude that's crazy how much fucking how do you get that big how did I gotta hit him up like dude what was your before diet give me that shit I need this man's before diet if I could do that and I could stop like uh, I don't know 50 kilos in that I would be I would be the mountain that would be awesome. No, I wouldn't. I don't weigh 100. Fuck, I'd have to put on so much weight to even get halfway to him. How the fuck did he do that? Okay. 
He's got some not not safe for work pictures. So is that him naked? I got to see what a naked six foot eight, seven hundred pound man looks like. Ah, he's got shorts on. Boring. Yeah, lot, looks like a lot of the leftover weight is just loose skin. That's fucking crazy. I got to hit up that guy and find out what his diet is. Honestly, I'm so inspired right now. I want to go eat a burger. Incredible, right? The, yeah, what I was saying is, bro, there are cunts out there that weigh... What, it, what even is 764 pounds in kilos? 764 pounds kilos. The actual unit. 350 kilos. There are cunts that weigh 350 kilos and they can get out of the bed, go to the gym and fucking lose it. What are you doing, bro? Nothing. Get out of the bed. Stop listening to me. Oh, you know what? Listen to me while you go to the gym. That's what I've started doing. I've started just fucking... There is so much time. Like going to the gym only takes 40 minutes. And again, I'm talking to me. I'm not talking to you, right? Going to the gym takes 40 minutes for like a good, actual, nice workout. 40 minutes. That's all you need. If you're going hard, that's all you need, right? You can stay there for an hour if you want to do the extra bit. But really, you only like need 40 minutes of whatever the fuck you're doing. Weightlifting, running, cardio, whatever. 40 minutes, three to five times a week. That's enough. You got that fucking time. That's an album. That's some of an audio book. That's some of a podcast. Get there, all right? I'm telling you, man. 2020 is the year that I start to look big. Not big, just like not skinny. That's my only goal, right? I've been seeing the comments, right? People have been noticing. Bro, I put up an Instagram story. Someone said, man, the Pythons are out. I've never had that comment in my life before. That's incredible, right? Now, yes, I still look like I narrowly escaped uh, the Holocaust, right? I just got out of Auschwitz. But, but previously, I looked like I just got out of Auschwitz like the day they were liberated. You know, like the, towards the end of World War II, towards the end of the Holocaust, America liberates Auschwitz. I, I used to look like the people that were rescued at that point. But now I look like a guy that escaped Auschwitz and maybe he was in the hard labor camp, you know? So he, he, he bulked up a little bit just before they stopped feeding him. That's what I look like. <laughs> you know, I, I was out there smashing rocks and uh, I, I went in there on a full stomach. I'm on, I'm on like week three. And then I, I bogged up a little bit and then I managed to escape, right? That's what I look like now. I, I escaped Auschwitz. I wasn't liberated. I escaped, right? I mean, I was still in Auschwitz, so I'm not at a healthy body weight, but I look like I escaped on my own because I still got some physical ability left. That's what I look like. And I'm trying to move up to not... I'm trying to... You know what I'm trying to move up to? I'm trying to move up to liberator of Auschwitz. That's what I want. You know, liberator or, you know, maybe at a minimum... <laughs> maybe at a minimum guard of Auschwitz. You know what I mean? Like without the uniform and the beliefs, obviously, just the physique. Those guys look fit. That's all I'm saying. I'm still watching these World War II documentaries. It's incredible. The History Channel, you should totally fucking watch it. It's called, for some reason, it's fucking Twitter cancer, right? The title. It's called Hashtag The World Wars. Watch that shit. It's like four to six episodes, each of them like 50 minutes that start at the start of World War One and go towards the end and the aftermath of World War Two. Fuck, it is incredible, right? Such good viewing. I'm learning so much. I'm remembering all the... I forgot how much I knew about history. Like, I just... Like, I just... I, I have all of the, the dot points of the things that happen. I've just forgotten all of the dates. But watching this thing has made me go, oh, yeah, fucking Franz Ferdinand, and then this guy, and then MacArthur, and then fucking uh, Churchill, and blah, blah, blah. I'm remembering all of the points. Um, it's so it's so interesting, and really, you should really watch it. Like, you learn so much, and, and they have actors that are actually good. It's very high budget. I don't know why the fuck they did it. Surely they couldn't have made money on it. It looks incredible. Um, but yeah, i fucking really, really enjoying that at the moment. Go watch that shit. Right, now that we've uh, talked about, yelled at you and myself for being fat slash skinny cunt, uh, I need to do some uh, plugs. I'm currently on the road. I'm in an, a motorhome coming to regional Australia. Now, if you don't come to these shows... Straight up, you're not going to see me for years, okay? Because this, as fun as the shows have been, and as how, however much I appreciate all the people coming out, people grabbing the merch, people saying nice things after the show, I love the shows. 
getting to you regional cunts has been the biggest, most difficult, stressful fuck around that me and Luke have ever had to go, and go through in our lives, right? We hired a motorhome that is built for three people and there are four people on it. I slept on the floor of the RV, right? Two nights ago, I'm home. I slept in my bed. I'm still feeling it, right? I'm still feeling it. So you cunts, right? Straight up, no matter how much money we make on this regional tour, which, by the way, won't be much, right? Because it's a regional tour, and we got to split it in half and pay Keelan, right? Support me on Patreon. That's the only reason you're getting the fucking stand-up clips, right? However much money we make, I'm not going through that shit again for years. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm coming up. Uh, I've got uh, on Feb 16, we'll be in Toowoomba. Feb 19, Bundaberg. Feb 20, Rockhampton. Feb 21, Mackay. Feb 27, Townsville. And then we finish up Feb 28 in Cairns. Get your tickets, loosebeers.com slash gigs. It's myself and Luke Kidgel. We're doing like uh, a split bill. So it's not, we're not on, the sta on stage at the same time. We're doing our stuff uh, separately and it is going off. Really, really enjoying it. I'm thoroughly enjoying these shows getting to you regional fucks not but the actual shows absolutely loving it um also melbourne comedy festival is on sale now tickets are going crazy for that one uh i'm coming back to the festival and i'm bringing that real shit you're not going to see this on the gala man i'm fucking telling you this is that real shit i'm bringing it to the melbourne comedy festival and it is going off it's uh basically the run-up to my comedy special so i am in my peak fucking form i'm seeing it dude i'm crushing at these shows and by the time i get to melbourne dude i'm gonna be nailing it starts on march 25th ends april 19th every single night i am doing a show get your tickets now loosespearscom slash gigs uk people i'm coming to you yeah we're organizing it now uh, i'll say that much uh i don't have dates i don't have cities don't fucking ask me Put your city into loosebeers.com slash gig list, the mailing list. That's how I decide where we go. If there's heaps of people in Manchester, I'll go to Manchester. If there's heaps of people in fucking... That's the only place in the UK that I know. I don't know. Glasgow. We'll go there. Put your city in. That's how I decide. Same goes for any fucking cunts in America or any other weird European place as well. All right? I'll see you there. Um, Wuhan, China, probably not going to go there. Not at least for a couple of days. Dude, how scary does that Wuhan shit look? They're lying. Every time I see a video from Wuhan or inside China of what the government doing is doing to like prevent further outbreak, and then every time I see the official Chinese statistics of how many people are infected and how many people have died, I just go, bro, someone's lying. Someone's lying either, right? Every single tweet I see of the government locking people in apartment buildings, not letting them go to work, closing down the banks, and then spraying God knows what kind of chemical into the fucking air, either that was all created on like a, an elaborate Hollywood set, right? Maybe Natalie Portman directed that and she wore a cape of all the fucking Chinese people that didn't get that director role, right? Maybe she's directing that. Or maybe the Chinese government are going, holy fuck, everyone's dying. Holy shit, it's the plague. And then going, <clears throat> everything is fine. Act natural. It just, it just looks like that fucking meme of that dog in the house on fire. Just going, this is fine. Everything's normal. Except instead of fire, it's just like Zyklon B while people with the plague just die. Crazy shit. Hope you guys enjoyed the bi-monthly bull episode that I put out um, about the coronavirus. I'm enjoying doing like really long John Oliver-esque videos about like one topic. I'm enjoying that doing, like I did that on the Jeffrey Epstein one, that went really well. And then I do the ones like the shorter clips on multiple stories and people like that. I think I'm just mixing it up just because, you know, sometimes I start writing about coronavirus or whatever, and then I just keep going and keep going and keep going. And then I get to the end of the script. I'm like, why the fuck am I putting this in bi-monthly bull? This is a stand-up set. And then I do it in bi-monthly bull and start questioning why I did that. Um, uh, what else do we want to talk about here? Yeah. So get your fucking tickets, all that kind of shit. Um, and also, uh, my TV pilot is dropping this week. Well, the trailer is. The announcement of the official title, uh, the bio, the poster, the trailer, that's all coming this week on the 19th is when the trailer drops out. Uh, the poster we're putting up on the 18th everywhere, so you guys will get to see it, get to uh, pre-order it and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, it is, I'm, man, I'm so excited for this to come out. I said it last episode, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but this is it, bro. This is the project, right? Outside of stand up, you know, if I had a, an ideal dream project, it's this TV pilot that we're dropping the trailer of on the 19th. So all I can ask is that you guys share it. That's all I want. Just fucking share it, whether it's on Instagram, YouTube, whatever, share that shit show your friends because this is the fucking project and uh yeah pre-order it as well because um i'll talk about it more in the next episode but that's how we're going to fund the creation of more all right so um oh that's right so the reason why i'm here i needed to get into that how long yeah but we're all right with the cameras so the reason why i'm here instead of on the motorhome is that oh man i wish i wish i just did did the diva thing and cracked it and be like i'm going to fly to every show or i'm not going to do it i wish i did that no i got some fucking opportunity that i can't talk about because it's non nda agreements and all that kind of shit jeez you know shit's getting serious when you got to sign a non-disclosure agreement right that dude that must be how whores feel when they fuck drake you know like oh my god in terms of like pussy dick hopping i fucking made it Bro, in terms of throwing my pussy around, if you got to, if dude, if you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement just before you sit on a cock, you've made it in the ho- in the hoe department. You know what I mean? In the hoeing industry, if you sign an NDA before you lick a ball bag, you've made it. Like you can't get any more successful that in, than that. You know, than signing an NDA before you suck someone's dick. That's incredible. You know, you've really made it. If you sign an NDA, congratulations, bitch, you've made it. Like, if, if you sign an NDA before you get your back blown out, dude, you need to really get impregnated. You know what I mean? Like, once you once you start hoeing your way up the fucking industry ladder and you get to the NDA point, you might want to start sleeping upside down. That's all I'm saying, right? Because there's no higher limit than that. And, you know, you're not, you're not getting paid for this, are you? It's not a, not a sustainable career, even if you are getting paid. So maybe, right? Just hope that the condom doesn't work. Maybe just hope that you're you're within that 99.95. I mean, the, the 0.05% of, of condom failures, yeah? Just just cross, cross those fingers, sleep upside down, and hopefully you hit the jackpot. And you're getting those that child support payment for the rest of your life because you've hit the top, man. All you hoes out there listening to Speared Sundays, I know you're out there, right? I know there's a couple out there. I'm not saying, right? I'm not disparaging your hustle. I respect it, ladies. I truly do, right? Some people are born to, uh, to you know, to to improve the world and to build bridges and and uh, and and uh, win Oscars despite the fact your name is Bong, right? And some of us, we're born to ho. Dude, that sounds like um a top 40 song that Christian mothers would be like horrified by. I'm born to hoe. I'm born to hoe. It's the only way to go. Yeah, I'm born to hoe. I'm born to hoe. I'm born to hoe. Yeah, there's no other way to go. I'm born to hoe. Top 40 hit. I just wrote it on the fucking Speared Sundays podcast. You've heard it. Music producers, if you're listening, do your thing. <laughs> oh, fuck. Someone's going to make that. And then I'm going to have to post it. Oh, I've amused myself, right? Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. This is why I'm here. Right. So, as I was saying, I've made it in this whole life because I'm signing NDAs when I'm doing some kind of promotion, right? So I got this big project, so I had to fucking, oh, so they were flying an international film crew over to shoot this thing. So I kind of had to work around them because I wasn't the only person they were doing this campaign thing with. So I locked in the dates and and, and then they, they, they're they like, all right, we need to do it during between here and here. And I look at those dates and it's pretty much exactly the fucking regional tour. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to fucking fly home from the motorhome tour do this thing and then fly back, I'm going to die, right? So anyway, I agree to it because uh, I'm always hustling. Gary V life, yeah? Always working, never not working. Sleep is for the week, all that shit, yeah? Um, 
because I'm always hustling and I never slack off, except for when it comes to the gym, I'm kind of unreliable on that shit. But everything else, no worries, yeah? So I, I work out that I've got like fucking three days. Uh, so I'm flying back to the fucking motorhome tomorrow. So I, uh, where, where, where was I? I was in fucking Wagga Wagga, right? Which, yes, for all of my international viewers, is a real fucking word and a real town. It's an Aboriginal word that means land of crows, right? Although I, I was think I was I said it on stage. I was like, I don't think Wagga Wagga means land of crows. If you translate it literally, right? Surely it would just mean crow crow, right? And then they were like, oh, that sounds fucking stupid. Let's say that it, that it means land of crows, right? As the whitest man in Australia, I think I am the authority on Aboriginal language translation. That's what I'm trying to say, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to get myself fucking cancelled by some elder. Actually, um, right, so I had to fly from Wagga Wagga Regional Airport to fucking Melbourne. Now, I thought I would, I'd be like, whatever, I can do that. Normal flight. You know, I fly all the time. Easy. No, right? It was a regional airport. That means less people travel. That means you don't get the big fucking Airbus, right? The modern shit. No. I had to take a fucking propeller plane home. A propeller plane, bro. I thought I was flying with the fucking Wright brothers. I thought we were, oh, like, done with that shit. I've just been watching World War II documentaries, seeing those fucking planes fall out of the sky. I don't want to get into one, Right? Dude, it was the scariest shit ever. Right before, and also I'm I'm like doing Instagram stories and shit at the regional airport, going, oh, I'm getting on a fucking propeller plane. This is scary." And of course, you cunts, instead of sending me a nice message like "You'll be fine, Lewis," everyone uses those and they don't crash. Some cunt just sends me a news article of a propeller plane going down this year because a propeller fell off, which is exactly what I was worried about. I'm like, "Oh, those things spin really fast. Surely there's a." limit to how many rotations those things can do before they fucking fly off and that is exactly the article that this fucking random cunt sends me and of course i'm too dumb to not read it so i click on it immediately and i go oh great that's how i'm gonna end right i'm gonna go down like fucking kobe bro horrible right kobe's in the news and i'm thinking don't dude this can happen to anyone right especially people who are built for the nba i'm finished I get on the propeller plane, right, and I got the emergency exit row, which I'm stoked about, until I realize that the emergency exit row on a propeller plane is right next to the fucking propeller. And also, so is the emergency exit. That's the dumbest shit ever. If I have to emergency exit and the fucking pilot or the plane is malfunctioned, right, or the, the pilot can't stop the engine or whatever the fuck. If I got to jump out, I don't want to jump out in front of the moving propeller and get turned into fucking mincemeat, blown out the other end. I don't want to get turned into fucking hors d'oeuvres just trying to get off the plane. It was so fucking... I hated it, man. I, I Normally, I'm fine to fly, but I hated that propeller shit, right? Because it spins... It starts spinning up and it starts obviously really slowly and then it gets really, really fast, right? But I'm the window is right next to me and it looks right at the propeller and as it's spinning, it looks like it's just fucking throwing the blade at you. Like it just looks like someone, you know when you were fucking 10 and your mate would wave a stick in your face and go, oh, I'm not touching you, I'm not going to hit you. It looked like that, but it was a fucking plane blade. Awful. And it was so loud the whole flight. I put on my noise cancelling headphones and the headphones couldn't understand it. So the headphones started going, like trying to play the opposite frequency to the plane, but it just ended up like making it twice as loud for some reason. So fucking annoying. Only in one ear as well. Um, they might be faulty. Knowing Apple products, I wouldn't be fucking surprised. But anyway, I made it and I'm alive. But <sighs> tomorrow... I got to go back, don't I? Yeah. So tomorrow I got to get on a fucking, I got, I got to get two flights. I have to fly to Sydney. And then when I get to Sydney, I have to get on another fucking propeller plane and fly to Bathurst, I think. 
where they do the Bathurst 100, so regional Australia. Like, oh, we don't have anything to do, but we like to go fast in a circle. Huh? That's culture. Vroom, vroom. That shit. Right? So I'm freaking out about this propeller plane flight, right? But that's only the second most dangerous flight I have to take. Because the flight to Sydney is with fucking Tiger. Dude, I'm really rolling the dice here. I'm flying Tiger and then I'm getting on a propeller plane. I'm, don't tell me I don't, I don't work hard for you cunts. I'm getting on a Tiger flight and then a propeller plane to do stand-up in fucking Bathurst. Dude, I better get my dick sucked on arrival. Oh, fuck. And you know what? The show isn't sold out. Ungrateful bastards. Now, nah, hopefully they will fill up. The regional towns, they, they, they usually book late because they, because they know that nobody else is booking in advance. They go, yeah, I'll get it on the day. And then, and then that works for them. In Melbourne, that shit doesn't work. Like, some, like I, loved, I love seeing those messages, those lazy cunts that go, yeah, man, I'll get tickets on the door. And then I get a message like fucking three weeks before the show. Hey, man, it's sold out. Are there any tickets? Nah, and I fucking told you. So suck it up, cunt. Dude, I had the... Do I have to stop this? Ugh. I'll stop it. Dude, I had the rudest interaction with someone, right? Oh, it wasn't it wasn't rude. Oh no, yes it was, right? Rudest interaction. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of two. I had I, I had one that was less rude, right? Uh, I do this show in a fucking um, regional town and uh, went great, yeah? It was awesome, packed, full of people, did an amazing show. We we're on a high. It was the early show of the tour, like show two, I think. Can't remember what city we were in. Um, sorry, city? Did I say city? Sorry, I meant town, right? Um, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, uh, can't remember what town, doesn't matter, right? So we finished the show, it went really well, it was like really packed, but it wasn't sold out. And then we go to the supermarket afterwards to get some food. And then this guy comes up to me in the supermarket and he goes, bro, Lewis, I love your stuff, man. And then immediately realizes that he's fucked up because he knows about the show and he knew that it was tonight and he decided not to go. Instead, he would prefer to go to Coles, right? So I'm like, you know, I'm nice. You know, I'm, all, I'm nice to everyone who says hi. But the people that I see after a show that I just did in their town, if they don't say my grandma died, I'll be nice, but you're not getting much from me. And, and that's fair, right? Because, dude, we had the celeb spot guy on our fucking Luke and Lewis, on the Luke and Lewis podcast, this, and it's a big thing on, on that show. The, the kid, he stakes out airports and he tries to find celebrities, right? And he gets all these A-listers. He told us this story about how he staked out the rapper B.O.B.'s hotel to get a photo with him. And then B.O.B. went into the hotel. The kid runs up and goes, oh, I want to get a selfie. And this is so inspiring. This is so cool. I love this. B.O.B. goes... Show me your phone. Pull up your music app. And then the kid pulls up his phone. And then B.O.B. types in his own name. And the kid doesn't have many songs from B.O.B. So he goes, Sorry, bro. You're not enough of a fan. <laughs> bro, that's alpha energy. Sorry, man. You don't like me enough. We both know that. So you don't get the photo. And then he left. That's so good. I'm going to start doing that shit. Anytime someone comes up to me after I've just done a show and they weren't at the show, sorry, bro. We both know that you don't like me that much. So have a good night. I want to do that shit. I know that I never will because I'm too nice, but I want to. Dude, ha happened at the supermarket. I almost did it, dude. I ought, because because regional towns, it was such a risk, and every ticket sale counts so much. And also, we know that those towns never get shows. So you know, obviously, you would think that they'd show up, right? So I do this show. It was an amazing show. Everyone was gone. Was so nice. Thanks so much for coming. We never get shows. We really appreciate it. And then this guy afterwards goes. Hey, man, I love your stuff. And I looked around and in my head, I thought, do ya? Do ya like my stuff? 
or do you just want the photo? And I get talking to him and then he fucks up. He goes, he, he, he almost goes, oh, what are you doing in? And then he goes, he realizes, oh, he's here for, oh, you're here for a show tonight. Yeah. And then I went, yep. Just to see what he would say. And then he went, oh, yeah. Oh, I really wanted to go to that. And I went, oh, yeah. Just to see what excuse he'd have. And he went, oh, but I, you know, I just, I, um, can I get a photo? <laughs> Bro, I fucking pulled this card. I gave him every opportunity to say, my grandma died. Dude, just be honest. Say you don't like me that much. That's fine. You don't have to come to a show. But if you get a photo, right, surely that means you like me enough to fucking support what I do or come and see my best shit. And if you don't, that's fine. You don't have to come. I don't expect it. But I want a little bit of honesty. If you get a photo with me and you've never seen a show, right, and you had the opportunity to, just say, oh, sorry, man. I just want the photo to post on Instagram. I don't actually want to support what you do. That's all. That's all I want, man. Because you know what? I, re I respect the real ones that come to the shows, that buy the t-shirt, get the special. I respect that shit so much and I appreciate it so much, right? That when the other people, the secondhand fans, right? Not secondhand. Second class fans. That's what we're going to call them, right? I got my first class people. The cunts that listen to this, the people that come to the show, support what I do, excited for the next video, the guys that show their friends, right? First class fans, not even fans, first class fucking supporters. I hate, the, I don't like the term fan. I'm such a fan. Shut up, cunt. You're a supporter, right? We're in this together, bro. I give you that real shit. You give me the fucking money to continue doing it. That's how it works. We're a team, bro. I mean, I'm not going to cut you in on the profits because you're not that far into the team, but, you know, it's still there. <laughs> not that there are many profits because if there were heaps of profits, I'd be wearing a fucking Dior cape with instructions on how to fuck yourself. Just, just embroider all of the reasons why I'm a better person than you. Because I made it out and you didn't, so I know best. Right? So I just went, oh, how come you didn't make it? And he went, oh, oh, you, just because, you know, because he couldn't say that he was busy, right? Because I'm talking to him 10 minutes after the show. And he went, oh, you know, uh, mm, can I get a photo? And I went, yeah, man. And in my head, I went, but I'm not going to smile. <laughs> oh, fuck. No, but I, I uh, on a serious note, say hi if you see me, you know. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be a cunt. I've never. I've never been an asshole, and I never will. Except for that one guy that dropped his pants at Chanson Shopping Centre. I was an asshole to him, but he took his pants off. So, fair trade. All right. Uh, with that, I think it's time to get into miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast. I'm just gonna reset the cameras, pull up the emails, and let's fucking go. All right. So, if you're new to the podcast, welcome. Fuck you. Uh, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. I do apologize for doing this, but it's, uh, I'm contractually obliged to do this every episode, and I signed an NDA not to, because I'm not allowed to tell you why. Um, it's the part of the podcast where I answer questions uh, from listeners who uh, send them into my email at podcast at lewspears.com. And I will never tweet that email. I will never put it on my website. I will never tell anyone who asks me what the podcast email is because I say it every episode. And if you can't remember podcast at lewspears.com, you're a moron and I don't want to read your email. Capiche? <laughs> so, um, fuck, I'm giving it to you cunts tonight, aren't I? Um, but that's all right because you and I both know that anyone who's too dumb to remember the email I say multiple times in every episode for the past three years is dumb and you don't want to hear their email, do you? No. All right. So good. Someone, someone on Twitter, right? They tweeted me. So I'll see if I can find it. They asked me the email. Um, where are we? 
fucking uh what did they say here we go someone tweeted me and they go at Lou Spears see and like that is literally part of the email podcast at loosespears.com like if you write on twitter at loosespears surely your brain goes oh and here's the rest of it right that's how we remember shit by association red apples this chair that's how our brains work by associating shit with other shit tall guy comedian right that's how it fucking works. If you type on your fucking computer at Lou Spears and you can't remember the other half of the email, like, dude, if you read this tweet, he wrote the fucking email himself at Lou Spears. Where can I find the contact info to send in questions to your podcast? Podcast at Lou Spears is literally in his tweet. It's like he, he split up my fucking email and put it in code in the tweet and then was too dumb to decipher his own fucking code work. Podcast at loosespears.com. I will never, ever answer a question about what it is because every time I fucking read it on the podcast, you cunts got to remember. And if you don't, I don't want to read it because you can't work your own brain. So he writes, at Lou Spears, where can I find the contact info to send in questions to your podcast? And he, sp he spelled in with two ends like it was a fucking uh, bar in medieval times. And then he wrote two with two O's. Uh, and then he did a, 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 he did a fucking paragraph and three spaces for some reason, no capital L, and wrote, looked on your website, didn't find it under mailing lists or podcast. And then one of you guys responded to that tweet with, it's podcast at payattentioncunt.com.au. And that's great. If I can outsource my customer service to you guys, that's great. I, that, and that's what I want to do. Congratulations to all of my listeners. You sitting there, guy, girl, right? Underage, uh, overage, no matter what it is, unless you're a woman, I don't work with women. We all know this, right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm a bit like Natalie Portman in that way. You know, the only cunt I'll hire is, is me. <laughs> Man, woman, child, congratulations. You've just got the job. You are now my customer service. I have outsourced customer service to you guys. If you see someone asking a question about when I'm going to come to a city, about what, where my tickets are, what the podcast email is, any dumb cunt question that I get every fucking day, I hereby hire you to answer that question for me in the most sarcastic and douchey way possible. Congratulations on the new role. There's no, there's no uniform. You can do it in the new if you want, but I, I expect you to be on top of this, right? It's your new job. So with that said, congratulations. Let's get into the fucking emails. Uh, all right. So first email subject line, my mate's girlfriend got Halloweenied by his friend. Oh no. Oh, ah. Hey Lewis, I only heard about you last year, but I love your stuff. Binge, listen to the podcast, blah, blah. Hope to make it to your next Adelaide show. I missed no slide season due to hospital. Bro, that's perfect, right? That's great. I accept the fact that you missed it because you were in hospital, right? Love the honesty. If you didn't come to the show because you just... Eh, that's also fine, but I want some honesty, right? Hospital, no worries. If we get a photo, I'm going to smile because I know I'm going to see you at my next Adelaide show. All good, bro. Um... I'm in a slight predicament with a couple of friends. A few years ago, my friend Andy was being cheated on by his partner, Sarah. Me being what I thought was a good friend, told Andy about it. But Sarah found out, cracked it, said I was lying, and I lost my friend. Oh, that sucks. That's a shame when you try and protect your mate and it blows up in your face. No, oh, she would never cheat on me because... Um... Even though you have nothing to gain from telling me that I'm being cheated on. Uh, fuck. Right? Skip forward a few months and I was at the club for a Halloween party with another friend, Josh. He is also Andy's friend. He took Sarah's, Sarah home and slept with her. Oh no. So she's still cheating and you saw it. He recorded it and sent it to Andy. Oh, okay. Your friend Josh is a cunt 
I hope that Sarah knew it was being recorded. Because if not, that's sexual assault, bro. And I think whatever your question is, the answer might be to drop Josh. I don't like that. Hopefully she knew it was recording. Whatever. You didn't do it. Josh did it. Whatever. This was the biggest I told you so moment. Uh, but I approached Andy and I offered him a bed and someone to talk to, seeing as even if he did hate me, he was still a friend to me. Oh, you're a good, you're a good guy, man. I mean, apart from associating with Josh, you're a good cunt. Um, now, flash forward two years, Sarah and Andy are still together with a kid. Holy fuck, I think your friend Andy is a moron. But I know Sarah and Andy are still together with a kid, but I know that she is still hitting up Josh when he comes to town as Josh and I keep in contact. I've resolved my friendship with Andy, but I don't know how, I don't know if I should say anything again because I know what happened last time. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Have a shit one. Fuck, man. See, now, look. This is such a hard situation. Sometimes, right? Right, okay. I think the first time you told, you were totally right to do so. That's your friend. You had your evidence. You were helping him out. You're protecting him. All good. Uh, now, just because they have a kid and you've already tried and it, and it ended so badly the first time you told, maybe you shouldn't just for the kid, maybe Andy has fucking accepted his fate and knows that he has a whore for a wife. So, maybe he already knows. Even if he doesn't know, maybe like he knows, do you know what I mean? Like he hasn't doesn't explicitly have the evidence, but he sees all of the signs and he goes, oh, I guess that's happening again. Whatever. I'll turn a blind eye to it, work myself to death and fucking cry when I'm 65. That shit. I don't know. That's such a hard one. I would lean towards... Fuck. It's up to you, man. I think that... Uh, yeah. I would tell him. I would want to know. It always comes down to that. I'd want to know. So, I would tell him, but I wouldn't tell him unless you had, like, hard evidence. You know? Like, maybe send him screenshots if you're friends with Josh... Um, fucking crazy that jo that she's still fucking your friend Josh if he last time sent video I guess she did know about it then maybe I'm assuming that she didn't know they were being recorded very weird for her to hit like that sounds like the most disrespectful shit of all time if the, the guy she initially got caught cheating on with and then also sent a video of him fucking her, she goes back to, she sounds like a very horrible person. So you know what? Fuck her. Yeah, tell him. I'd want to know. Tell him, hey, she's still cheating on you, bro. And here's the proof. I would get your proof and then I would tell. Um, if, you know what? I've done this before. If you don't want to get the backlash, and when I did this, right, worked really well. Uh, why not just tell them anonymously? Send them an email from a fake email account with evidence that you could get publicly or that anyone could get, right? So not evidence that only you could get that would reveal that it is you, right? Just set, Maybe just do that. Send it anonymously. I did that once. It wasn't, it wasn't like a close friend. I knew the person. I vaguely knew the person. And... No, I, I vaguely knew the girl. And I knew the guy pretty well. And he was a really good person. And they were really early into their relationship. And there was evidence of the girl cheating on him online. On like a secret Twitter account. So I just screenshotted it and emailed it to him anonymously. And I just went... Hey, thought you'd like to know. And then I got an email back. Thanks, man. Appreciate this. He had no idea who it was. And then uh, they broke up a few days later. All good. I, pre I, I, pre I stood up and protected a fellow fellow good man. And then he got rid of her. And then she went and lived his li her life. And he lived his. All good. Maybe do that, bro. That could work. Um, and that, you know what? I would appreciate... That's how I'd want to know. 
So yeah, that's my answer, man. I would, uh, depending on your relationship, I would tell him yourself personally, uh, or if if you really want to keep that friendship and make sure nothing gets in the way, uh, do it anonymously. Because you know, another thing is maybe maybe if you tell him yourself, and then he's got a fucking kid with her. And then he decided he just decides to put up with the cheating or try to fix the relationship. It's you, you know, if he finds out, it's not like they're for sure gonna break up. You know, people are very complex. Maybe he's a bit of a bitch. Uh, maybe they have an arrangement. Who knows? Maybe he thinks he can fix her, even though he definitely can't. And then that will just put you in a really awkward position. You know, where you can't really be friends with the guy who keeps telling you that his fucking wife is cheating on him. If you want to stay with her. Even if your friend is right, you can't keep that friendship going because it will fucking destroy your relationship. So maybe you just email him anonymously with information that anyone could get. And it could be anyone who sent the email, if you know what I mean. So that's my answer, bro. Keep me updated. I'd like to know what happens. Send me another email when uh, some significant developments happen. All right, on to the final email. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh... Because the camera is dying, that is all I have time for this Sunday, but I think I've done about an hour. Sorry if I haven't, but that's what it's going to be. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching. Please do consider supporting me on Patreon, because that shit really does help, and we're trying to build that up so we can move into a better space uh, and really just do more video content for you, because I really don't want to be here recording at fucking 11pm. I would love to record during the day, but the warehouse is too crazy. I can't do it anymore. It used to be good, but then all the business has changed, and now it's very loud. Uh, uh, and uh, recording at 11 p.m. Uh, instead of having a productive day is affecting my life. So support me on Patreon and hopefully we can get out of here and do some uh, bit of better video content. You get early access to everything that I do and access to the uh, Discord as well, which is uh, really full of banter and it's very fun. I'm in there pretty much every day as well. So thank you very much for listening uh, and I will see you next Sunday. I think the next episode will be recorded from uh, the van, but I'm not too sure. Uh, probably from the van. Either way, it'll definitely come out and uh, it'll be quite an interesting one if it is recorded from the fucking motorhome. So thanks for watching, listening, support me on Patreon and I'll talk to you next Sunday. Grab your tickets and have a fucking shit one. Loosebeers.com slash gigs. You know the drill.